Hello, this is Curtis Crow the Photo Pro here to show you how to use imports and exports. Now this tutorial is for the absolute beginner. It's the people that may have uh, that may have Adobe Lightroom with their Creative Cloud but don't know how to use it yet. Maybe they've started with Photoshop or perhaps they are completely new to the Adobe system as a whole. So importing and exporting is the absolute most basic function you need to know when using Lightroom because that's what gets you started. And that's what how you finish your shoe. Everything else is pretty self-explanatory in the middle. So let's go ahead and get started. Now I already have a catalog open just in case you have jumped into Lightroom, opened a few things, and and really didn't go anywhere from there. So I'm going to show you right now how to make a new catalog in order to put your new photos in. So we're going to go to Lightroom here, and then we're going to go new catalog. And we're going to save it as uh, Melissa oop, uh, Zoo. I like to use these as like tags so that way they're easier to find. Um, works better on the Windows operating system. With Mac, you can use the actual tags themselves. Um, but I prefer to do keyword searches like this. So Melissa Zoo Summer 2014. So we're going to go ahead and hit create and it's going to open up a new catalog this is something fresh with a catalog it's all the photos you did for a particular thing now some people use catalogs for entire years and then use collections uh, in the middle to kind of organize their photo photos into folders but i like to use catalogs for every individual shoot because it's easier to export and track in my opinion so we got a fresh catalog as you can tell there's no photos here all photos zero photos we still have everything else here this is probably what your screen is going to look like if you never opened up lightroom before so the way that they kind of want you to do it is go to import and then find your photos right in here and then you have all your photos here but i want to do it a little differently because i find this other way easier and it works on both Windows and Mac. All you do is after you backed up your, your files onto your computer, you just drag the folder with all the photos in it. And see how there's a little plus sign? You just let go right into that gray screen right there. And then it finds the photos and takes you to where we were just at. And all the photos are selected and everything's hunky-dory. So then we hit import. And then here comes all the photos. There's a progress bar right here. It shouldn't take that long, but depending on the size of your catalog and the speed of your computer, it could dramatically change. I've had some imports take several minutes on a slower computer with a larger catalog, um, but typically it's pretty fast because it's already on your computer and all Lightroom is doing is indexing those files in order for it to access it and, and quickly uh, preview the images for you. Now, for the people that are a little bit more technical, uh, Lightroom does not create additional copies of photos. It merely takes the photos and then creates a index of it and makes the edits through um, additional files. So no matter what, your photos, any changes you make to your photos is not destructive. Unless you go out of your way to actually replace the photos with the new ones, it will not be destructive. So that means any changes you make here are not permanent. You can open up a catalog after having it closed for six months, come back and still make edits. So here we are with the photos that, that I took, uh, go through. I could go ahead and star them, but this tutorial isn't about organization. It's a, simply about the importing and exporting process. So once I have the photos that I want to export, which for teaching reasons, we're just going to do all of them. So I hit Command A for all the photos, and then I can right click, go to export, and just hit export dot dot dot. Now this gives you all your options for exporting your CR2 raw files or JPEGs or whatever came out of your camera into new JPEGs. So we go to put into subfolder, we'll do zoo, and what this does is it takes all the photos that it's about to export and throws it into a folder for you. And uh, let's see here. We want 100% quality. And you could change it to different forms. 
But uh, for just demonstration and, and practicality, because most people will convert their photos into JPEGs, uh, we'll just keep it there, color space. If you're a little bit more of a pro as far as how software handles colors, you'll want to uh, adjust that as needed. And very important, resizing options. You can change the megapixels. You can change the short edge, the long edge, the dimensions themselves, and the white or, uh, width and height. So that's very important. If you're about to post some of these images onto your website, you don't need a 22 megapixel photo for every photo on your website, uh, mostly because websites do not display at that, that resolution. Now you may wanna still go for a fairly high resolution just because retina screens are becoming so popular and, and 4Ks you know, right there on the horizon. So you wanna be prepared for the future, but you also don't want these images to take forever to load on social media or websites or stuff like that. So you may need that uh, you you will want to be aware of these features here. So we're going to turn resizing off, sharpen for screen, standard amount of sharpening. And uh, we have watermarks right here. I was doing a tutorial, which uh, should be yesterday's tutorial in your perspective, with watermarks. I don't use watermarks, so we're just going to go ahead and click them off. But if you do want to use watermarks, check that other video. It's a very good tutorial to show you how to use watermarks. And then it even gives you options for after the export's done, like to show in Finder. Basically what that means is, uh, or it'll show in Explorer if you're on Windows. It'll just bring up a little window showing all your newly exported photos. Uh, you can also open other applications. Uh, for example, if you're big into time lapses, you might wanna do open other applications to get your time lapse uh, app rolling right after the export. But that's really up to you. I'm going to go ahead and have it do nothing and simply hit export. Preparing to export. Now it's going to run through here. You have a progress bar right here. Now something to also be aware of. If you, sent, if you send your clients multiple copies of your photos, certain edits or black and white in color, you can still keep working while you're exporting and it's not gonna affect the files that were just exported. For example, all the ones that were that have already started to export, they're not gonna show up in black and white even though I just set all the images to black and white. They're still gonna export under their colored settings, which is awesome. Because that also means you can set all your, your black and whites to start exporting. And I only recommend this if you have a really strong computer, but you can also start doing multiple exports. So we can just go ahead and right click and export and then we're gonna do this as dash black and white. Check all our other settings and export. And then you're gonna see over here once it's prepared to export, you're gonna see there's now two operations in progress. The first one and the second one. Now it will render both at the same time. So see, as you can see here, this is the second export, it's already starting to move. And this is very useful if you're about to go to bed, you need to get these photos exported by the morning, go ahead and set up four or five different exports in order to get them all done by the morning. For example, I send out color photos, black and white photos, what I call the cutting room floor, which is all the photos that didn't make it, and also speed shots. So that's, that's typically four different exports, sometimes five, uh, depending on any special requests. Uh, five exports happening for one photo shoot when I'm done with it. So, because I have a faster computer, I go ahead and export all those at the same time. Then I go out and do things that I need to be doing, such as making calls to get other clients, or go out and go to the mall, or go see a movie, or do other things where I am actually enjoying my life, or pushing myself forward with my business. So, Lightroom is really a piece of software that is going to make your life easier. And push the boundaries of your own photography, your own services, and all that other great stuff. So it's a powerful tool. I hope this tutorial may have nudged you in the direction of going ahead and using Lightroom. And just to prove it to you, in just a second, we will wait till these exports are done, and I will show you the final photos just to prove that the multiple exports does work. 
All right, so it is done exporting. Now we're gonna show you the results. If we go to our finder, I have it right here. Let me zoom in on that for you. Uh, zoo and zoo in black and white, just like we set it up in Lightroom. And as you can see, all these photos, they're all in color. Sorry, I don't have any good ones. I'll post some good ones later. And all these ones, are in black and white. So the exporting tool is very powerful and it's very good to have the option to set up several exports uh, at the same time in order to get all your exports done because if you set up an export, go, okay, I'll come back in like 20, 30 minutes. Oh, okay, it's almost done, I'll come back later. And it's significantly longer because you get busy, sidetracked, whatever. That's a lot of potential time in which you could be doing another export. So that's kind of the ins and outs to importing and exporting. I hope this video was uh, useful for you. Please like and subscribe. It's always good to help us and our channel uh, grow and develop if we have more likes and more subscriptions and all that other stuff. And leave a comment. Let me know if you have any questions about importing or exporting. I'm more than happy to answer them. My Skype account is always available to you too. It's Curtis Crow, the photo pro, all one word on Skype. If you go there, reach out to me, you'll get me. So this has been Curtis Crow, the photo pro, and as I always do, toodles.